So we're on our way down to Media, Pennsylvania to, to visit with George Crumb. I know George for close to 45 years. And of course the purpose of this, the immediate purpose of this visit and discussion is the uh, concerts at Che Music Society in late April and May that include songbooks of George. We're doing a set of 10 at the Che Music Society. That's with Thomas Hampson and four percussionists. And then also uh, we're doing music for Summer Evening, which was written in the 70s and which is a pioneering piece of his, done all over the world now for two piano and percussion. Uh, I was privileged to perform uh, the world premiere and to have my name on the piece as one of the people to whom it's written for and dedicated to. Uh, when, you, when you'll meet George today, you'll see that he's a uh, very soft-spoken, uh, very gentle. Uh, you would not expect the music that you know of his to have been written by this man. And there's something, you know, deep in him that brings out this music. I'm so You're glad to be here. Well, delighted to see you here too, Gil. Well, I'm really thrilled to be here. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of your music lately. Well, I'm, I hear about these things. Yeah, <laughs> good heavens. Wow. It's really interesting how things, you know, come full circle. So, that's true. You know, In fact, I, sounds like you're doing a bit, having a bath of the song. I am here. having a yeah. festival, <laughs> <laughs> a George Crumb festival in my right. life. <laughs> well, you've played enough of it in the past, yeah. uh, you know. But the, these songs are are quite special, it seems to me, like um, a kind of rebirth for you, it seems to me, that just yeah. finding these texts and being inspired by them songs uh, some most of them I knew even as a kid so you've written now seven songbooks yeah and that's the end of the series but that's uh, that's a lot each one is uh, you know 40 uh, 40 to 45 minutes in duration so it's it's my uh, cycle it's my cycle of cycles <laughs> well it's very very significant they're beautiful George oh thanks very much thanks <laughs> I've never thought of uh, myself as anything but really a traditional composer. I feel those influences are very strong. As a kid, uh, you know, back in Charleston, West Virginia in the 40s, Debussy was uh, almost an ultra-modern, you know, in that part of the country. So, but I loved his music and I studied piano then and always known a lot of percussionists and, and found them to be some of the most imaginative and uh, like untrammeled people I've ever met. They're willing to try things and they always want to show you things they've discovered. <laughs> and I've tried not to forget some of the things that particularly impress me and I've known uh, these people from my earliest years, you know. And these sounds now have all uh, become available and uh, it's in fact the, the, the um, great number of possibilities is almost uh, daunting, you know. Some things I've invented, actually. A few little things I've invented myself. Yes. And a, a few things I've stolen. You remember, Stravinsky says, don't borrow, steal. <laughs> so, you know, like you hear in another composer, something you like very much, well, maybe I could use that in my own way or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all, it's all part of the same big music. The other piece that we're doing on that weekend of George's at the Chain Music Society is music for a summer evening. And of course, I'm terribly proud of things that, that have my name on it, and that in which I was lucky enough to do the first performance. I was thinking about a music that was almost, uh, you know, primitive in itself, and it was almost unformed, you know, and kind of, uh, 
like a uh, a wild music of some time, (laughs) maybe a prehistoric time, you know, because many of the sounds are uh, uh, just like rhythmical gruntings, you know, almost. This has been done hundreds of times in the fact that it was written and I had a part in the first performance Mm -hmm. and that this is a piece that's gone out into the world and has a life of its own. It's very thrilling. There's only one premiere and you did it, (laughs) Yale. But think what it means to me to introduce this piece to other people, to play it with other people who love it as much as I do and that I was involved in this piece 47 years ago, (laughs) that I can still stand and walk (laughs) and lean over the piano and play it is an accomplishment anyway. (laughs) So anyway, I'm very, very proud of this piece. It's a beautiful, beautiful work. It attests to your physical condition (laughs) that you you have a back still that permits you to do some of these things, Gil. I am lucky. (laughs) I am lucky. I'm 75 years old now. So when you live a certain length of time, you've lived through a, a significant period of history. And so I've lived through a significant period of musical history, starting as a young man and doing contemporary music. And there's a kind of uh, parallel with what George, who's now over 80 years old, has lived through, we've sort of lived together in this world. I mean, we've gone, we've grown older together. (laughs) So I've been able to be a kind of witness to this. He turns out to be, you know, a remarkable, creative spirit, deeply sincere, deeply honest, and thoughtful, and also quite ordinary and quite simple and uh, it was a, a touching experience to spend all that time with him.